Okay, in this video I'm going to show you my advanced Windows games programming project that I created alongside Andrew Worsencroft and Robert Butler in our final year. Uh, this project received a first. The idea behind the project was to create a games engine that was completely versatile, dynamic and robust. That you could plug bits in, take bits out and it wouldn't break. And also allowed the user to completely uh, configure individual unique gaming experiences inside one engine and we had to create three of those different games inside our one engine. So we have our engine, we have our level, which is essentially our game, uh, configured in an XML form. We have our sprites and our sounds and further up in the hierarchy we have a DLL folder which I'll come to later. Let me show you the game first of all, let's dive straight into that. This is my game that I created, uh, it's a side scrolling it's called Blowing in the Wind, and it's essentially you take control of the wind and blow this poor little leaf around this um, platformed world. Uh, nothing too graphically interesting at all. You can see that there's uh, physics in it, there's bounding boxes, etc. Et so there's music. Uh, nothing graphically interesting, no real gaming experience, but the idea was to show that you could configure this engine to create whatever you wanted. Let me close that now, and I'll show you the level, because this is where the real magic begins to happen. So inside the level, it's an XML, I'm just showing you inside a uh, text file, uh, we have entities, and each entity has uh, a certain number of components. Um, we have, for example, the leaf here, it has position, bounding box, uh, movable is true, so it reacts to gravity, and we can move it with our key control, which is, we've got some key controls here, we, got, we can change the, the force and the wind, and we've got uh, controllable key sets in there as well. Whereas differencing to that, indifference, the platform here, you can see, is false. It's not movable, so you can't move it. There's no key controls that go with it. Uh, it has a position and a bounding box as well, but it's a static object. Okay, so let me show you something cool now. If I get rid of, let me just get rid of this entity. I'm just going to cut him. I'm going to save it. I'm going to close it. I'm going to run it again. And now, see, there's only one platform, so it's completely configurable. I could change those positions and move the platforms around if I like, but just for video purposes, just got rid of it, make it quicker. So let's close that back up. Now, the game, the, the level, tells the game what to make, and it uses the sprites and sounds to do so. However, we used something called the solid principles to create our game. I don't want to go into the solid principles in this video too much, but it essentially makes the game future-proof, extendable, uh, without having to, you know, change bits of code, rebuild it, etc, etc. It's a built engine and new bits are just being pulled into it. Plugins, DLLs, dynamic link libraries is the method we chose to use. Okay, so uh, we use the solid principles and the DLLs were part of what's called an observer pattern. And I'll just quickly explain that. In our, in our game, in our engine, we have something called our post office, which is our observer. And basically, the post office is the only thing that the game knows about, the only thing that's really sort of hard-coded in there. All the DLLs communicate to this post office, which then communicates back out to the DLLs in the game as appropriate. So for example, the physics uh, knows that it needs to do gravity, for example, uh, if gravity is specified. So uh, physics will tell the post office that it needs to move movable components um, down by a bit, go, do it. So that message will go from physics to the post office, post office out to uh, graphics to update the graphics, back out to game logic to update the game logic, and etc, etc. So we can take bits out without breaking it. Let me show you that, for example. So I'm going to use physics as a good example. I'm going to take physics, cut it out of our plugins folder, just put it on my desktop over here so you can see it's there, so it's out. Let me just refresh this. There we go. Computer's a bit slow. There's no physics anymore. So now we have no physics in our game. What will happen? Surely the game will break. Well, let me show you. We run it. The game still runs perfectly. The leaf isn't moving because physics doesn't exist anymore. There's no gravity to pull it down. I can't blow the wind at it anymore because there's no wind physics to do that. So the game still works, just without physics. So it's completely changeable, removable. We can have what DLLs we want. We can take away what DLLs we don't want. Let me close that. So that was a crucial part of our game, and that, as I explained, was the uh, observer pattern. Uh, the next two bits of our game are the um, service. In fact, I'm just going to quickly pop back that uh, physics DLL before I forget it's there. 
and everything doesn't work. No, I'm just kidding. Everything will work. As you saw. Here we go. Um, the next main bit is called the service locator pattern, and that is essentially the DLLs folder. At the start of the, uh, the engine, when it runs, it looks into the plugins folder, sees what plugins are there, and uses them at runtime. Okay, and that's essentially what I was showing you by removing one of the plugins and still being okay. Um, we can add more and it'll pick those up at the start of run. Uh, our final one, uh, one of our design patterns, is the strategy pattern. And that uh, resides within the XML uh, file, realistically. Um, and that is that we, instead of uh, creating an object, and for example, we don't know what kind of objects user would want to create. It could be a monster, it could be a... Um, car with five cylinders or something like that we simply create a generic object and we give them a whole bunch of different options to choose from um, so for example this leaf was a uh, movable it had mass etc etc um, you can give there's no see there's no controllable inside of platforms because that's not something we want to control essentially what we're doing is instantiating an object a new entity out of whatever it's given that's the strategy pattern. It's really useful. Cool. So the last thing I want to show you is, of course, the fact that other games can be created out of it. All of you see, you've only seen the blowing in the wind game that I made. I've got Andy Wersencroft's game here as well. And instead of you know flinging around all the DLLs right now on this video, I've got it built off onto the right here. So I'm just going to run it and show you that the different game experience can be created inside of this one engine. So mine was a side-scrolling thingy. This is a top-down. He's programmed AI and he's using the AI DLL, which I choose not to use in my, for example. Um, he's got the blue block heading towards the red blocks. There's chasing algorithms. He's got green blocks moving randomly either or sort of scaling the walls, as you can see there. Um, and it's, it's pathfinding. It's uh, using, again, bounding boxes to not move through the, the blue objects. Uh, so it's another gaming experience. Again, the graphics aren't interesting, but that doesn't matter. The whole idea was to... Um, prove different games could be made without one engine. We did that very successfully. Um, so, that is essentially it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope it all made sense. If you want any more information, please email me on ben.cadell at outlook.com or go to my website, bencadell.wordpress.com. Have a great day.